It's time for our next big adventure. We are driving the Pacific Coast Highway, starting in Malibu and making our way north. So join us as we explore the beautiful coastline of California on this epic road trip. The sights and sounds of our Pacific Coast Highway adventure are being uploaded using Nomad Internet, our choice for internet on the go. If you need your own Nomad Internet, check it out in the description below. Welcome to Pismo Beach. So if you are just finding us, we are Jed and Sandy and we are currently driving the Pacific Coast Highway and we are just now kind of getting into the part of the drive that we're most excited about from here in Pismo Beach, up the shoreline, along Big Sur. I think it's gonna be amazing. Last night we camped at Oceano OHV State Recreation Area. So that's a mouthful. It is, it's a lot. <laughs> Our Parks Pass did not get us in for free, but they do offer camping for $10 a night. It's the same price as the day pass, so basically I think you can just just, yeah. Probably one of the cheapest things we found in California thus far. The views are incredible. You drive one mile down the beach, it's pretty much open camping. There's no spots. If you don't have four wheel drive, I would use your best judgment because, I mean, the tide comes in pretty far and some of the sand can be pretty soft. But overall, fantastic place to stay. But this morning we've left there and we are now at the Pismo Beach Pier. And so we are going to explore the pier area, some of the downtown, and see what Pismo is all about. So one of the very first things that you notice as you walk onto the pier is that there are several old Airstreams here. We are huge fans of Airstreams. We've owned two in the past and we absolutely love them, especially the old ones. So there's actually a visitor center in one of them. You can get some local information if you haven't already done your research. Kind of like us. Yeah, <laughs> which we, you know, we kind of fly by the seat of our pants sometimes. And also there's lots of surfing here. So we see lots of people out there in the water surfing, probably a really great place to rent a board and learn to surf if that's something you're interested in. For me, no. Jed, maybe. I would love to, but you won't let me. It's not true. You don't let me do fun things. <laughs> I mean. Fun fact, this pier is really popular among fishermen. As a matter of fact, this pier is open 24 seven. And one of the things that locals like to do is to come out here at night and go shark fishing. That doesn't sound terrifying at all. You know, coming out here in the dark, trying to fish for an apex predator. I don't know, it might be kind of fun. We also read on a sign that there's tons of wildlife in the area. You can actually see whales from this pier. I don't know what time of year that takes place, but I'll tell you one thing, it's not today. Ah uh, yes, the majestic North American trash eagle. The clam that they have here, so it's called the Pismo clam. Between 1916 and 1947, they commercially were it farmed for, is that what it's called, fish farm? Sure. Anyway, they collected 6.25 million pounds of these clams. And that sounds like a pretty impressive number, except for it devastated the clam population. As a matter of fact, the last legal Pismo clam was collected in 1993. So legal is like four and a half inches is one for the clam. <laughs> and now that poor lonely clam lives in a retirement condo overlooking the ocean, I mean, pondering what once was. Pretty nice retirement. <laughs> but you know what lots of clams mean? Clam chowder. I know you've been waiting for your dose of food. Splash Cafe, which is supposed to have some of the best clam chowder here in all of Pismo Beach, and this looks amazing. So we got the clam chowder bowl, and we decided to go all the way with it, so it's got some other seafood, clams on top, bacon, scallions, cheese, it is totally loaded. And then we had to get some steamer clams as well. All of it looks amazing. I cannot wait to try this. I'm a little nervous. Why are you nervous? Because I want it to be really good. Excuse me, sir. I'm wanting 10 of these. It's really good. There's there's nobody over there. It's just, I don't. I made that up. It's really, really good. It's so creamy. The clam is, mm, you have to try it. It is delicious. Here's a pro tip from a self-proclaimed clam expert. If they ever offer you bread, get it. Because broth. It's almost like it's in a, a light tomato sauce. They're seasoned really nice. And clams they have a they have a pretty strong flavor, but they're really good. What about that bread? That's where it's at. So we've been walking around the downtown area a little bit. There are tons of 
restaurants and cute little shops. But if you notice when we had our lunch, we only had one bowl of chowder and that's because we were saving room for something else. Let's go. Hey, I'm still following you. I wanna, I wanna know what that something else is. You'll, you'll find out soon enough. Oh, I think I can smell them. We got some cinnamon rolls from Old West Cinnamon Rolls and they look amazing. They're supposed to be amazing. They're very highly rated. So this one here is just a cream cheese cinnamon roll and this one here is the maple bacon. It looks like real fresh bacon on there, kind of crumbled up. I'm ready to try these. I need a sturdier fork. Mm. That is so, mm. that is so good. I love sweet stuff. <laughs> and then the maple bacon. You're not gonna like that at all, honey. Then we can just throw it away, I guess. Yes. Oh, that's delicious. We've driven about 10 minutes down the road from Pismo to El Duayan Beach. And the reason why we're here, tide pools. It's not quite low tide yet, but we've come down to the beach a little bit early, hoping that we can spot some amazing aquatic wildlife. But don't hold your breath just yet because we all know the rule on this channel when Jed has a camera. Wildlife just, just never appears. But we're gonna try anyway. This beach doesn't have your typical white sand. It's, it's kind of this multicolored and it looks wet, but it's completely dry. And the rocks that you see here in the sand are, they're absolutely fascinating. So many different colors and patterns. Okay, first little bit of wildlife. Found a bunch of sea snails. Also see a lot of seagrass. I'm really hoping that that's a good sign that we can see some other things. So those little blobs we saw, it looks like they are sea anemones. So we've found several that were opened up and you can see along the back side of them when they're open that they're covered in rocks. So when they're kind of exposed, they kind of close up to protect themselves and they actually look like they're just sand. They're like a pretty blue color. We saw kind of a greenish Bluish one. Bluish and green, yeah. I hope you have your weird shoes on today because we're getting a little weird. So we have left Pismo Beach after we spent a little bit of time at the beach yesterday. We just got really tired, so we just went and relaxed for the rest of the day. But this morning we have headed up to San Luis Obispo. Where we're getting weird. Where we're gonna get weird. One of our favorite websites out there to find things to do or different things to do is called Atlas Obscura. So if you haven't heard of them before, do take a look. You can find some kind of kitschy places. But there are actually several places here that are on that list. So. We are starting out our day by exploring the very unique Madonna Inn. So this place is actually really cool. It was built in 1958 and has over 100 rooms and every single room here is different. No two rooms are alike. Now we didn't stay here so obviously we didn't get to see the hotel rooms but in one of the little shops downstairs they had postcards that had pictures of each of the rooms so that you could kind of see what each of the rooms look like. The pink dining room is absolutely stunning. It's so cool. It looks like they've already decorated for Easter. It's worth at least a walk through. When you come here, you can come through the main parts of the building. You can come into the lobby. They have several shops scattered throughout. And then they also have a coffee shop and a little cafe where you can try their desserts and pastries, which all look amazing. And a lot of them are pink. They apparently, they really like the kitschy stuff and they really, really, really like pink. And as an added note, if you're a guy, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this out here. This is my 2022 <laughs> must urinate place. The bathroom, the, the, the urinal, in the men's bathroom is a waterfall so you know you step up to the line and uh you know you start doing your business and it has sensors built into the wall and water starts to flow but there is a caveat it does it does splash the ankles which is it's a little uh it's, it's still it's still worth peeing in i mean the women's bathroom was very pink and beautiful but Definitely not as exciting as the waterfall. So we definitely suggest this as kind of like a little stop as you're driving through. You know, take it as an opportunity to stop, stretch your legs, use the bathroom, grab a snack. But yeah, this is a just really cool place just to stop and see. Our next destination requires two things. One, gum. Two, hand sanitizer. All right, time for our prep. Get them out. Where are we, Jeb? We're at Bubblegum <laughs> Alley, perhaps the grossest place on earth. Definitely so. From what I understand, um, so San Luis Obispo is a college town, and back in the 50s, for some unknown reason, people started putting bubblegum on the walls. They tried to shut it down a couple times. Gum just kept coming back. <laughs> Gum always comes back. The gum comes back. They tried to shut it down in the 70s. They tried to shut it down again in the 90s. But the gum keeps coming back. And I'm not sure why, because it's pretty disgusting. <laughs> 
So when you actually first walk in this alley, it actually smells minty, like gum. And I guess that's better than smelling like bad breath. Hints of fruit too. <laughs> Free gum. <laughs> which, which is kind of gross. <laughs> Time for what we came here for. Oh, I almost dropped mine. It's a little, drop it. a little slick. And gross. It is so cool. I can't even believe I'm going to touch this wall. And that's why we brought hand sanitizer. <laughs> After our brief stop in San Luis Obispo, we have worked our way a little bit further north on the one to the very small but beautiful town of Morro Bay. I know we didn't like cover any history, but I'm, st I'm still hungry. So, uh, so we, we had I, to grab some food. I know it seems like we've eaten a lot in this video too, but it's been filmed over a couple days in our own defense. And there is a lot of good seafood, so we have to keep eating more. Where we've been previously, it's not like you're gonna get fresh seafood, but here you can. Yes. So we stopped at a place called Tagnazi's Dockside. And it was delicious. Tons and tons of seafood options there. The menu is quite expansive. We ended up ordering a five piece fish and chips to share. We got a little bit of clam chowder because we wanted to try their clam chowder here. And one of Jed's favorites. Oysters. So we got, they're called barbecue oysters. They're just basically grilled in garlic butter and they are, they're freaking delicious. Mm -hmm. So I could have, eaten a million of them. Everything was absolutely delicious. Another fantastic meal. If you're here in Morro Bay, make sure you do try some of the seafood here because it is a big, pretty big fishing community here. So you know they have some really nice fresh seafood that they get right out here in the harbor. They legit have lockers in the back where fishermen pull up and fulfill their daily seafood order. You, you can't get fresher than that. I guess unless you just pluck it out of the water and just, just eat it. Just eat it. Now we're gonna actually take a little walk. This area along the water here is called the Embarcadero. There are some shops and some other little restaurants. We're not eating again, but <laughs> there's some shops and stuff and just pretty views of the water. So we're gonna walk along and check it out. Okay, this has to be like one of the cutest things I have ever seen in my entire life. We found the security cat. We found a security cat. <laughs> and super friendly. He's doing a good job. That's right. Oh, he's guarding me. <laughs> he's trying to show you that he's secure. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Look at this. This is amazing. Okay, <laughs> Morrow awesome. Beach is the best place ever now. Up next is the one thing that you absolutely cannot miss when you come to Morrow Bay. I mean, you can't miss it. It's huge. <laughs> We're talking about Morrow Rock. So as we were driving towards the rock, we saw these little speckles out in the water, and then we got super excited because they're otters. There's uh, there's gotta be, what, maybe 20 otters out here swimming around, rolling around and playing. Did you know that otters have the thickest skin of any animal on the face of this earth? And as cold as it is out here, I can only imagine how cold the water is. So it keeps those little guys warm. Fur, not skin. I meant to say fur. Next episode of Wonderful Revolution, our Pacific Coast Highway Adventure continues. So be sure to show us a little bit of love by hitting that like button. Go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss this adventure. And we'll see you next time. And until then, stay wonderful. Call it a day.